Whether you're taking Psych 101 in college, AP Psychology, or IB Psychology in high school, it is necessary to have some understanding of basic brain anatomy. In the following few videos, we're going to break down the brain and focus on the structures that are emphasized in these classes. All right, so what is the brain? Well, it's an organ located in the head that is about 75% water. Of the solid material, it is at minimum 60% pure, unadulterated fat. There are two main ingredients in the brain. First, and most importantly, we have nerve cells, or neurons. There are 100 billion neurons in the brain, and that almost equals the amount of stars in our Milky Way galaxy. We also have these cells called glial cells. Glial cells surround neurons and provide support and insulation. I like to say that my wife is my glial cell because she supports and takes care of me. That should get me some serious brownie points. The purpose behind studying the anatomy of the brain is that it is believed that different areas of the brain deal with different types of thoughts or functions in the body. This concept is called localization of function. Now humans are not all exactly the same, so there are some differences between brain areas and their functions. The best way to break down the structures in the brain is to start with the bottom and work our way up. The bottom of our brain, just above our spinal cord, is also the oldest area of the brain. It controls our basic functions, our need to survive. It's often called the alligator brain because like alligators, it focuses on our basic needs like mating, eating, sleep, survival. The structure right above the spinal cord is called the medulla oblongata. It is involved in our breathing, blood pressure, and heart rate. If you get stabbed or you damage your medulla in any way, you're going to die. Right above the medulla, you have the pons. The pons is a bit of a mystery, but we know it helps link the old brain to the newer structures above. It's also involved in sleeping and dreaming. In the back of the pons, at the bottom back of your head, you have the cerebellum, which actually is Latin for little brain, because it looks like a small brain attached to the back of your head. The cerebellum is involved with hand-eye coordination and voluntary muscle movements. You use it when you're playing video games like Call of Duty, and also if you drink too much alcohol, the cerebellum is affected because you lose coordination. Located next to the pons is the reticular formation, which is involved in our arousal. Not that kind of arousal, perv, but being awake versus asleep. When scientists remove the reticular formation in animals, like, I don't know, cats, they'll fall into a coma and they'll never, ever wake up. Next, on our right up the brain, we have the thalamus. This egg-shaped structure is the sensory switchboard of our brain. Information from our eyes, ears, mouth, and skin go first to the thalamus. The thalamus then decides whether the information is even important enough to be moved up to the higher structures in our brain. If it is important, the thalamus sends it to the appropriate area in the brain to be processed. On a side note, smell is the only sense not to use the thalamus. Above the thalamus, we have the limbic system. The limbic system is often called the emotional control center of our brain. It is made up of four important structures. First, we have the hypothalamus. This pea-sized structure has a plethora of functions. It is involved in our body temperature, sexual arousal, thirst, and our endocrine system, which is basically our hormone control. The hypothalamus also assists in our feelings of hunger. There is a lateral hypothalamus that makes us feel hungry. If you remove it, you'll never ever be hungry again. And there's the ventromedial hypothalamus that makes you feel full. If it's removed or destroyed, you'll never be able to feel full again. These two sections work together like a seesaw controlling our eating patterns. Next to the hypothalamus is the pituitary gland, and it's often called the master gland. It secretes hormones related to growth, and it also assists with the function of all the other glands. Next in our limbic system is the amygdala. The amygdala is involved in our basic animalistic emotions like rage and fear. When scientists remove the amygdala from rats, they no longer fear cats. Good for them. The last structure in our limbic system is the hippocampus. The hippocampus is involved in memory processing. The hippocampus itself is probably not where memories are stored, 
but it assists in organizing our memories. Damage to the hippocampus leads to the inability to store new information. In our next video, we'll go over the higher level structures in the brain, the cerebral cortex.